Well, hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome back to another video. This week we're jumping into a new Pokemon Fusion ROM hack, Pokemon Charged Red. In this game, the shiny rate has been increased drastically, just like in Pokemon Fused Dimensions. So of course, I'll be playing through the game with some of my favorite Fusion Pokemon, but in their shiny form. The game has around 150 new Fusion Pokemon, there's abilities up until Generation 5, and Fairy type is also included, and of course, as the title implies it's based on Pokemon Fire Red. As the question of the day, let me know what your favorite fusion Pokemon in this video was, because there's a bunch of cool ones and I can hardly pick myself. Before we jump right into the video, let's try to smash 3,829 likes. And while you're down there, of course, don't forget to subscribe as well. And with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into Pokemon Charged Red with only shiny fusion Pokemon. As we step foot outside of our house, we already see that the town has been changed around in structure. This is actually a reoccurring thing across the entirety of the map. Every single route and town has been changed around to give the Kanto region a little bit of a new, stylish look. Most of these changes are just for aesthetics and really don't change anything about the gameplay itself. Professor Oak then comes and picks us up and we get to pick out of our three starters. There is a Paras Bulbasaur fusion, a Mudkip Slowpoke fusion, and then a Pikachu Cyndaquil fusion. I really like the Cyndaquil fusion, but I'm going to go with Mudkip instead because I have to go for my channel mascot. After resetting a couple of times, I finally found out that this shiny is now yellow and looks really bad in my opinion. But maybe its evolutions will look a little bit better. Our shiny boy then absolutely obliterated Bulbasect, and I went on the road to Viridian City to grab Professor Oak's parcel, and I also found a shop with some really useful items like EXP shares, Lucky Eggs, Macho Braces, you name it. As we walk around Viridian City, we also see that it's been changed around quite a bit, and you can also capture Pokemon inside the city now. So after I went to Professor Oak to grab my balls and Pokedex, I went back to Viridian City to capture my first Pokemon. Once I was done running through the grass back and forward for about 20 minutes, I finally found the best shiny ever. Psyduff, a Psyduck Bidu fusion, and it's blue, so I love it. And it's probably the derpiest Pokemon in this entire game. So we added Bert to the squad, went to check out the Pokemon League, but got stopped by our rival again. He now has a Pidgey Ho-Oh fusion that's probably going to turn out amazing once it's a Pidgeot. Bert drowns it with a couple of water guns. Then Bulbasek gets destroyed by Mudpoke, and that is that, our rival is defeated. I'm also going to allow myself to capture one shiny after every gym badge I get, which in the end means I'll be able to grab 10 shiny Pokemon with the two that I got before the first gym badge. If you go to Viridian City and talk to this sign, your game will crash, so definitely try that out if you play this game for yourself. Really amazing. I then finally reach Pewter City and challenge the first gym leader, Brock, but he has a Spinner Rock, which I easily take care of with water guns, and the second Pokemon, Scraggsly, falls the same way, getting ourselves our first gym badge really quickly, and that means we can get ourselves a new shiny Pokemon. But first we evolve Mudpoke into Marsh Bro, and it doesn't really seem like this Pokemon gets any better. Luckily for us, our next fusion Pokemon that we find is significantly better. It's a Ponyard Nidoran male fusion, and it is blue once again. And blue, in my mind, always equals better than anything else. So here we have Heresy. I immediately evolve him into Ponorino, and he is of course going to be a Steel Poison type. In Mount Moon, I decided to pick up the Helix Fossil. If it only were the Jaw Fossil, then I'd actually be happy. Once I arrived in the next city, I then talked to the lady next to Nurse Joy, and she's the Move Relearner, which can definitely come in handy for quite a bit of Pokemon. Just as I'm about to head on over to Nugget Bridge, we get stopped by a rival who has a Pidhoto now. Really creative name, love it, but Bird is really going to destroy it with a water gun. Bulbasect came out, so I swapped out into my four times resistant Heresy, who could Metal Claw it a couple of times to take it out. And then Raltita and Rad Dean easily went down to Metal Claw and Double Kick. I followed the route after Nugget Bridge and finally found my way to the mad scientist's house, Bill. 
He has turned himself into a Pokemon that nobody has ever seen before because it's not fused with anything. So we get that abomination out of here by turning him back into a human. We grab the SS ticket and head straight on over to Misty's gym where I encounter another glitch. Every time you talk to Misty, your game will glitch out, whether it being before the fight or after the fight. You will be able to walk around, but only in a space of like six squares and you can't get out of the gym anymore. So I had to restart this entire run because I didn't have any save files from before I challenged Misty. Beware if you are going to fight Misty, make sure you have a save before you enter her gym. Her gym was actually really easy to take down as she has a Venian as her first Pokemon, which we can just confusion twice with Marshbro. And her final Pokemon is a Spunk Chow fusion, which we tackle to death. After the battle, my game crashed again, so I'll have to use walkthrough walls if I want to get to cut threes. Because it's impossible to progress otherwise. I went to Diglett's cave and found some really interesting Pokemon, including a Dig Duo with his head in the ground. But this wasn't the Pokemon that I found as my next shiny. The one I found was way cooler, a Tyranitar Haxorus Fusion, named Axtar. After naming him Vornor, we went to the SSN to challenge our rival again, but his team was easily swept by my new Pokemon, killing Pidgeotto, Colorita, and Raticking all with rock slides. For Ivysect, I swapped back into Heresy and killed it with two pecs. We now get the cut HM from the captain, which we can't use anyway. And I then decided to check out a little bit more of the boat, and every single area here has been turned into some kind of Pokemon sender. Once again, something that has no practical use. So I got out of there really quickly, glitched myself into the gym, made sure I completed that puzzle in under two minutes, which must be a new world record, and then went up to Lieutenant Surge himself to challenge him for my third gym badge. Or technically my second. This could have even been a normal type gym, because every single fusion of his has the secondary normal type. Skittings went down to a double kick, Loud Buzz, an actual really cool Pokemon, also went down to double kick. I also did some decent damage on the final Pokemon, Zangiritsu, before having to swap out into Vornor and take it out with a Rock Slide. Easily gaining our third gym badge and then traveling to the Rock Tunnel, and just in front of that, I found my next shiny, Wizkid. And I'm pretty excited to use this because, I mean, I just said it, it looks really cool. Can't wait for it to turn into an Exploud. And now we come to the hardest part of this entire video, Rock Tunnel. It's been entirely changed around so you have no idea where to go unless you get the Flash HM. Which is something I wasn't going to track back for. After about 30 minutes of getting lost, I finally got out and evolved Vornor into Fraxitar. I then went to the Pokemon Tower to take on the next rival battle quickly. And first I set up three dragon dances with Vornor on his Pidhodo and proceed to sweep it with Rock Slide. His Gyarlix then came out, which is a water steel type, so it doesn't have many weaknesses. And I don't have much to deal with it, so I just rock slide it three times to take it out. And the rest of his team all went down to rock slide, even his new Pokemon, Growron, a fire steel type. Then just outside of Lavender Town, I ran into a trainer with a Giratina Vulpix fusion, and it looks absolutely ridiculous. Eventually, I reached Celadon City, grabbed myself a Moonstone, and evolved Heresy into Nitto Sharp, my personal favorite fusion in this game. And it has a pretty good typing too. We all know that the next gym leader is Erika, but as you may know, we don't have that many Pokemon that could deal with her quickly and easily. So I decided to bring in Vornor as my first Pokemon, Dragon Dance up, and then Dragon and breath Chorus Vine a bunch of times because it decided to set up some iron defenses, so my dragon dances didn't really do much. For the next Pokemon, Chirpluma just went for two rock slides and took it out. And the last Pokemon, Bellorim, went down to a single Metal Claw because it's now a Grass Fairy type. Four gym badges acquired, and we all know that that means a new Pokemon for me. I looked around in the grass just outside of the bike route and found myself a Machby. A Magmortar Machamp Fusion, which is a fire fighting type. Exactly what we needed for the last gym. But I'm still not going to complain about it because it actually looks pretty decent. Once I named it Chadby, I went to the T-Rocket hideout, where he also immediately evolved into Matchmar. 
To my surprise, the T-Rocket hideout has not been changed around because I was prepared to go onto the spinning tiles and be stuck for about another hour again. But that wasn't the case, so we easily reached Giovanni and showed him who's boss. He now has a Nido Queen fusion against my Do King fusion, but he has a Primplop added to it. Somehow my Metal Claw easily just one-shots it, so it must be part Ice type. He then has a Skullo fan, a Bug Ground type, so my Water type's easy to care of it with Water Pulses. He then has an Axe Star of his own, so I go back into Heresy and Metal Claw at once, which gives us the Self Scope. So we can go grab Mr. Fuji, who is being guarded by Mother. Literally, mother. And once we get the Poke Flute, we head on over to Silphco first, where we evolve Bert into one of the biggest abominations that I've ever seen, and Marsh Bro evolves into Swamp King, which would probably look better if it wasn't shiny. Not gonna lie, this is probably one of the only Swamp Art forms that you're going to see me dislike. I finally reached a level on where my rival was waiting for me, so let's see if our team can take him down. He now finally has a Pid Heyo, and I'm not gonna lie, I thought this thing was going to look cooler. It just lacks a little bit of detail, so I think once this game updates a little bit and changes the sprites, a lot of the Pokemon will look way cooler. But first I'm going to Dragon Dance up with Vornor again three times and then take it out with Rock Slide again. Vornor also learned Dig, which we can easily use to take down Gyarilix. This version's Gardevoir then comes out and we easily take it down with Rock Slide. Growlron gets destroyed by a 4x super effective dig, and finally, Venesect goes down by Rock Slide. Once again, a sweep with Vornor, let's grab that Lapras, which is now a Lapras Shaman Fusion. And if I didn't have so many water types already, I would definitely shiny hunt this, because this is probably the cutest Pokemon in this game. Once we're done admiring it, we open the final door of Silphco and challenge Giovanni. Nidoprim goes down to a Fire Punch from Chadby. His Skullofan is probably the dangerous Pokemon we've faced so far, because it almost takes down my Swamp King after I hit an Aqua Tail, so I have to bring in Bert to clean it up. He then has a non-shiny Nidosharp, which also looks very cool. I don't know if I like the blue or the red more, actually. But I decide to bring out my own one. Despite being three levels lower, we can still one-shot it with a single dig. And his final Pokemon is Fraxitar, so one Iron Head, one win against the Mafia boss. Let's grab our Master Ball, evolve Wiz into Ectiloud, which... I'm not gonna lie, I'm more of a fan of Loudred. And Chadmi then evolves into Magmortar as well. With these buffs to the team, we go and march to Sabrina's gym to try and grab our fifth gym badge, that's actually only our fourth. She leads off with a Swoo Rain, so I'm going to Dark Pulse it twice with Wiz. We did get paralyzed, have no idea how that's even possible since we are an electric type. I decide not to swap out against Espton, and I get hit with a Psychic doing a lot of damage but not enough to kill me, so Dark Pulse is once again going to overpower it. She then has the evolution of the thing we saw at Misty's, a Grum Turn. So I swap out it to Heresy, dig it and brick break it a couple of times until it finally falls and her last Pokemon is a God of War. It is a Psychic Fairy type so one of my Iron Heads can take care of it and just like that we earned ourselves the Marsh Badge. Allowing ourselves to capture a new Pokemon so I go to the Pokemon Tower where I want a Ghost type. There's quite a lot of things available here but I got myself a Steel Ghost type in Gaznamite which is a Magneton Gengar Fusion. Something I definitely won't complain about. Once we name it Andy we evolve it into Haunton which is definitely the creepiest Pokemon we've found yet. Right Rivaling even Mother. And then we had to go and challenge Koga. I decided to take the bike route where I had to wake up the Snorlax, who's now not a Lax anymore, but a King. The two laziest Pokemon fused together. This might as well be me. The Safari Zone then wasn't changed at all, so I grabbed the HM for Surf once I arrived there. And just before we took on Koga, I evolved Andy into Genzone. Something that's definitely going to need an updated sprite in the future. But it doesn't look half bad. I finally decided to give Swamp King some action to shine. I set up a Shell Smash on Skullofan, his first Pokemon, and then proceed to sweep it with a Psychic. I also smash Wheezy Rock and Garbocolo against the wall with Psychics easily taking both of them out, but his final Pokemon is a Muck Reuniclus Fusion, who's not going to be weak to Psychic, so I swap out into Genzone and Shadow Ball it once to gain our 6th Gym Badge. 
I traveled all the way back to Pallet Town, took the boat to try to get the Cinnabar, but first ran into a Carvana Gibble Fusion, and I knew I had to have this shiny, so I started looking around, hoping that I wouldn't get the Tentacle Frillish Fusion. But the Pokemon God Arceus shined upon me and gave me my Gibbana, which actually looks pretty decent in its shiny form. With Nanners added to the team, I revived my Helix Fossil, and this fusion doesn't look that great, so I'm not going to shiny hunt for it later. I'm instead going to go to the mansion, pick up my secret key, and evolve Fraxitar into Haxitar. And this definitely rivals Heresy for the best fusion in my opinion. I also evolved Nanners into the Sharpedo Garchomp fusion, and I was pretty disappointed when I saw the outcome. But I guess it's a Sea Shark and a Land Shark combined, so I don't know what I was expecting. Anyway, with these new powerhouses on the team, I took on Blaine, who starts off with a Flare Ton. I set up a Dragon Dance and use my Aqua Jet with Nanners to one-shot it. Rifflosion is up next. And I definitely would have preferred this as my starter. Luckily for us, it's not the best Pokemon because we jet him back in his ball. Saw's Dash gets destroyed by a Rock Slide from Vorner, and we then see Agronine come out. Also a pretty disappointing fusion. Luckily we can easily take it off the screen by swapping into Heresy and digging it once, taking Blaine's Gym Badge, finding a new encounter in the mansion, a Torchic Sneasel fusion. I really like this one's shiny colors as well, so let's hope it stays as cool once it evolves. I wanted to check out one of the legendary birds, so I went to Zapdos, but saw that it wasn't fused with anything, which was kind of disappointing, so I just left it alone. Sneechick then evolved into Blazivile, and just as I'm about to take on the last gym leader Giovanni, we see that he also has a Blazivile as his first Pokemon. We do have Chad B as our starter, so we Brick Break it once because it's super effective, take it out. His Nidopolean comes out, so I swap out into Frieza and Drain Punch it twice, once again taking it out really quickly. Nido Sharp only took one Blaze Kick, but then he has a Frelibor, a Water Fire type. So I went into Andy and he went for Earthquake. Luckily I have a Levitate ability so that gets cancelled out. I go for one Thunderbolt and it's down. He then also has a Hexatar so I go for the Flash Cannon two times in a row and finish it off. Last Gym Badge, but not really Last Gym Badge acquired. I head on over to Victory Road, but just as we're about to reach the guards, we get stopped by the same man that we defeated at the start of this video. Let's see if we can take him down again. We start off by killing his Pidgeot Ho-Oh with a Rock Slide from Vornor. Then Agron comes out, so we dig it once with Heresy. He then has a Lit Leap, pretty funny name there which we Iron Head as well and take out very, very quickly. For Fralibor, I go into Andy. I do get hit with a Crunch, leaving me with 45 HP, but a Thunderbolt then takes it out again. Gothivore then can't take a single Flash Cannon, and his final Pokemon, Venusect, still gets countered by my Heresy's Peck. Even all of these hours later. And have to sneak our way past the second guard because we don't have the gym badge. And eventually reach Victory Road where I find my final shiny Pokemon, High Dry Bok. A poison dragon type which is green and I love it. I won't be using him though because I'll be using the team that I just used for my rival battle. Don't have much left to do so we go straight to Lorelei and see if we can take down her water slash ice type team. She leads with a Separatic, a superior Milotic fusion, so Heresy's new Mega Horn can take care of it with only two hits. Blazivile then goes down to two Brick Breaks, do Doom to a single Iron Head because now it's a dark ice type. For Probo Rain, I decided to finally swap out into Swamp King. I set up two Shell Smashes, take it out with Surf, but then he has a Cloyothorn. Which luckily enough is also no match to my Surf. Nidopolean is part Ice type, but I decided to go for the Surf for some reason, but it still kills, so no problems there. Moving on to Bruno next. And everything in this league seems to have a Blazy Vile because Bruno also has one. I do go for two Earthquakes with Vornor to take it out quickly. Brisklops is very annoying to deal with, so I go into Frieza, but I get put to sleep by Spore. 
I take way too much damage, so I decide to bring in Andy instead. And with the single Shadow Ball, this thing now finally goes down. We then see a familiar face from the first gym leader, Scrawudo. We almost go down to a Sucker Punch, but survive with 12 HP, counter back with the Flash Cannon, and take it out. He then decides to use one of my own Pokemon against me, Mash Mortar, but Swamp King is the perfect counter with one Surf. We wash him away as well as the final Pokemon, Agronine. Wait, that wasn't even the final Pokemon, the final Pokemon is Chimichau, which we Iron Head with Heresy. And just like that, Bruno is defeated, let's see if Agatha puts up a bigger fight. The battle starts off great as Heresy takes down Umberton with only two Iron Heads, but then Chandilly comes out. I know this thing is a rock ghost type, so I know my Iron Head is once again going to finish it off in one hit. And then we finally see the derpiest Pokemon again, Giratails. I dig up some dirt and almost take it out with one shot, but then I have to swap out because I'm confused. I go into Swamp King, also get confused on him, but I hit my Surf and that finishes it off. Porytomb is up next, but I easily turn it back into an odd keystone with a Night Slash. The next Pokemon, Zatugrigus, also can take a Night Slash. And her final Pokemon is going to be a Genzone. And with Genzone versus Genzone, we manage to overpower it with Shadow Balls. Time to take on the final Elite Four member, Lance. This is once again a mirror match, Charchomp versus Nanners. And I'm gonna be totally fair here, the non-shiny one looks way better. I am a higher level, so I take it out with a Dragon Claw, but then Hexatar comes out, manages to tank a Dragon Claw and counter back to one-shot me. So we once again go for a mirror match, Dragon Claw him again and take him down. Hydreigon then comes out, outspeeds me and does a lot of damage with Outrage, but we still one shot with Dragon Claw. Septaria then also looks very cool, but it's not going to be on the screen too long because a Rock Slide takes it out. For this Viper Dactyl, I swap out into Andy, hit a Flash Cannon, don't do enough damage, and I eventually get taken out by Crunches because he kept healing up just as I was about to take him out. He also almost takes down Frieza with Poison Jab, but I hit a Night Slash after to end its reign of terror and go into the final Pokemon for Rally Boar. Swamp King sets up the Shell Smash, Psychics it and finishes off Lance, but sadly enough we lost two team members in this battle, so that's not great. But it is time to face our final opponent, Hunter. First time I said his name was at the final fight, and that's when it matters most. So let's Dragon Dance up four times with Vornor, take down Pitheo with a single Rock Slide, and sweep the rest of his team as well. Agronine goes down by Earthquake, God Ivar by Rock Slide again. Chandilly, Earthquake, Frelibor hits an Aqua Jet, almost kills me, but an Earthquake comes in and finishes it off. Final Pokemon Venusect, and one last Rock Slide finishes the job. Makes us champion of this weird Kanto region where everything is fused and different, but we have conquered Pokemon Charged Red. If I would have to give this game a rating out of 10, I would give it a 6.5 or something. Fused Dimensions is a 10 out of 10 for me, because most of the fusions look way better. And there is of course less glitches in that game, and this kind of seems like a beta for Fused Dimensions. But it's still really, really cool, and if this game gets a couple of updates in the future fixing most of the things, it could certainly rival Fused Dimensions. As always, if you have more ROM hacks that you want me to check out, let me know in the comments down below and I will check them out if I haven't already made a video on them. And with all of that out of the way, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It's always appreciated, but not needed. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.